Al, how you doing today? And your thoughts on this match, an exciting match between two ACC, might I say, powerhouses, emerging powerhouses, certainly an important match for both teams. Your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, definitely. You, a little bit earlier, you called this. I, you know, it's going to be a, a heavyweight fight today, I think. Um, you know, with the Panthers, you know, coming into this match with a record of, you know, 7-2-1, and one, um, meeting the Bears with a record of 8-1-2. and two. It's going to be a really beautiful um, collegiate soccer match today, and they're both going to really just fight to the end. Yeah, and you, uh, you mentioned those records. Some people may be wondering what the 1 and the 2 stand for, for the Golden Bears. That 1 stands for 1 defeat and yep. 2 ties. Their last match was a pretty exciting tie against Wake Forest. Your thoughts on that one? Yeah, that was a exceptional match by the Bears. You know, going into the second half, they were down 2-0. And, you know, they fought to the very end um, with Campbell Carroll, you know, coming in clutch with a, a beautiful goal. Um, not to mention Courtney Boone's beautiful volley off of a corner um, by Julia Leontini. So, yeah. Yeah. And uh, UNC, I'm sorry, uh, Pitt, their last match was against you at UNC, right? Uh, I believe a loss, uh, Pitt's last match. Um, they have uh, uh, lost two and tied one mm -hmm. overall. Yeah, seven wins. Uh, so they are looking to also continue to build. And um, this is going to be... Uh, an exciting match. Beautiful day here. Match is just kicking off, and we're excited to have you with us here uh, enjoying this Thursday afternoon soccer match. <laughs> Starting lineups. Starting with the Pitt Panthers. Uh, we have Ellie Breach, number zero, goalkeeper. Number four, Ellie Cofield, a senior. Number five, Sarah Shuponsky. Forward, number nine, Lucia Wells. Number 10, Kira Mellenhorse. Number 13, Ashley Moon. Number 14, Olivia Lee. Number 15, Chloe Minas. Number 19, a defender, is Grace Parrott. Excuse me, Grace Pettit. Uh, number 21, Katie Zowski. Number 23, Sam uh, Samaya Ferry. And the Panthers are coached by Randy Waldrum, who's in his seventh season with the Pitt Panthers. For the Golden Bears, in goal, Tegan Y making a start, fresh off her under 20 uh, Women's World Cup appearance for the U.S. national team. Number three, Maya Daly. Number 12, Carly Lima, leading points getter in the nation. Uh, number 14, Malia McMahon. Number 17, Alex Kloss in the midfield. Number 19, Courtney Boone. Number 22, G Julia Leontini in the midfield. Number 25, Campbell Carroll. Number 26, Miriam Hills, also uh, fresh off an appearance uh, for representing Germany in the under-20 World Cup. Uh, Girls got an opportunity. Number 29, Skylar Briggs. Number 39, Noel Bunn Flasher. Almost can't get through the uh, reading of the lineups without also trying to make sure we can share the action there. Looked like an uh, opportunity almost there for the Golden Bears, caught offside, but... Uh, I know we've mentioned a number of names. Certainly uh, a player to watch for the Golden Bears would be Carly Lima, who I mentioned already is the leading points point getter mm -hmm. in the nation. Um, Carly Lima, your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, Carly has had an exceptional season so far. She also, um, aside from points, leads the nation in goal scored, uh, coming in at 13 already this season. And... She's just, you know, she's just been a force of nature um, these last couple of games, and it'll, we'll definitely see it more today. The Golden Bears are coached, of course, by coach, head coach Neil McGuire, assistant coach Corey Callahan, assistant coaches, associate head coach Corey Callahan, Callahan assistant coaches Alex Sunley and Rachel Marsick. Um, and must be noted in our pre-match production conversations, Coach McGuire 
Uh, just talked about the respect that he has uh, for the Pitt coaching staff. Um, and uh, Coach Randy Waldrum has an exceptional repu reputation, built a number of programs. Mm -hmm. And this match, according to Coach McGuire, may be the most difficult match for the Golden Bears. Um, one of the reasons, apparently Carly Lima will have some defenders that are pretty fast, like she is, but Carly Lima is showing that she still has the juice and has won a corner for the Golden Bears. If his scouting report was that they match her with speed, it didn't look that way on that particular play, um, but that's one of the things that Coach McGuire has mentioned, that the pit defense uh, is, is, is blessed with pace as well. Definitely. I think, you know, even in watching the last, you know, UNC match, um, they came in with a, a three back, um, and, but they were able to match, yeah, they were able to, you know, match UNC's offense really well, and definitely was a good display of the pace they have in the back as well. And that was a half chance on that corner, the corner by Leontine, and he ball came over, and Bon Flasher looked like she may have had a, a clear header. Um, got, it, got something on it that was directed goalward, um, but ultimately it was a pretty easy save, but a uh, pretty fast start for the Golden Bears in the first five minutes here, which is not characteristic as relates to how they've scored in the last couple of matches where they've had to come behind or score goals in the second half. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd even add that, you know, Cal has in the past kind of presented as a bit more of a second half team and I'm I'm really glad to see them you know coming out really fast and trying to put the Panthers kind of on their back foot a little bit yeah I'm excited to um, to watch this Pitt Panther um, team um, you know this is um, I mean, this is just great AC soccer <laughs> Fontana I mean it's here it's yeah. first first Cal women's soccer match um, being hosted against an ACC opponent um, while we're in the ACC, right? Yeah. And um, so this is, every match it seems you're watching her story being made, right? Mm -hmm. um, so for those who, of you who are watching who have joined us from across the country, around the world, especially, you know, special shout out to the Pitt Panthers uh, fans who may be watching a match here from Edwards Stadium for the first time. We're excited to have you um, listening in and we're grateful to be uh, ACC um, compadres. Yeah, it's just definitely a historical moment today, for sure. Absolutely, absolutely. Golden Bears have earned a throw-in. It's the ever-present Skylar Briggs. Throws it in. Panthers are moving the ball nicely. Space here. Good looking cross, danger. It's a lovely cross uh, by Lucia Wells. Wells is actually from Pittsburgh, uh, Pennsylvania. Playing for hometown university. Space at the top of the box. Good tackle by Leontini. It's Fiercy. Nice cross. Good touch by Von Flescher. Finds Kloss. Cleaned up well by Moon. It's a good looking ball. Some nice interplay there. Pitt Panthers already signaling that they're here to play. Fontana, your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I think the the Panthers have, you know, in the past been really good at, you know, getting down the line and even finding an early cross in. I, I'm really happy to see these slip balls as well, um, something that we will see a lot more of, for sure. Samaya so Fiercy looks like someone to fear if you're a defender, <laughs> potentially, and make sure you keep your eye on us if you're a defendant. Uh, our notes suggest that Fiercy is 5'3 from Irvin, Texas, but she looks taller than 5'3 from here, Fontana. I, I would argue as well. 
Yeah, she, um, she looks like a, a striker striker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and she's currently leading the uh, Panthers um, with seven goals so far this season, um, as well as two assists. Um, I think in their last win against uh, Louisville, she scored her you know, second brace. Um, she's definitely a force to be reckoned with. Yeah, one to watch. Um, looks like uh, she's this as a midfielder, but she's certainly uh, playing high uh, up top uh, early on in the match. That's one of the things that Coach Neil Maguire noted in, in their scout. He noted that um, a lot of times it will look like or feel like they're ac you're actually under attack by four players. Uh, mm -hmm. And so you can even see that now from our angle. It's, you can see there's a, there's a press um, high up uh, in, the, in, in the sort of defensive third here of the Golden Bears. And there are four players who mm -hmm. are uh, seemingly um, lurking uh, yeah. to press. Uh, and that's something that Coach Neil Maguire was expecting. And so said, uh, so see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think the, you know, the Panthers putting, you know, pressure on, on Cal's back line, especially in their buildup, is going to be really important in disrupting Cal's play and Cal's flow. And I think they're definitely looking to, you know, win the ball higher up on the field. Um, and execute um, off those uh, mistakes. Good pass by Boone, finds Kloss to Briggs. One of the other things that was noted, um, something to keep an eye on to our, for our, our audience is that Pitt is also known for their aerial balls, that they're well uh, coached in the, uh, in the crosses and mm -hmm. um, dangerous on, on set pieces as well. Um, so something to keep your eye on for those of you who are looking at the, the match uh, tactically. It's something that I imagine the Golden Bears would have been preparing for. Yeah. Uh, similarly for the Panthers, I imagine you know, they would have heard the name Carly Lima. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, it sounds like they have defenders that have some pace. So they'll be, I'm sure, keeping an eye on her. But the interesting thing is, I mean, for example, in the Golden Bears last match, it wasn't Carly Lima who got on the score sheet, right? Yeah. It was, you know, Courtney Boone scoring her second career goal, or a skipper's goal, one of our captains. <laughs> and I like to call a skipper every now and then when we see her. And that was a skipper's goal. Uh, and then Campbell Carroll, you know, opening her Cal account. So um, it's going to be interesting. I'm excited about this match. I've been buzzing about this match all day, Funtown. I am excited. <laughs> uh, if you are in the Bay Area, if you're approximate, you need to get yourself over to Edwards Stadium and come watch this match. Uh, we're in the 12th minute uh, here on the campus of the University of California, Berkeley. Um, score is 0-0, match between the California Golden Bears and the Pitt Panthers. Yeah, I mean, you, man you mentioned, uh, you know, just buzzing for this game. I think, I think all the girls this week have, have been feeling the same way, you know, coming off that 2-2 tie to, you know, rank number five Wake Forest. It just built a lot of self-belief within this team, and, and I think they're they're really ready to you know get the rest of the season going and and come out strong today, um, and keep showing what you know they're made of. I haven't asked you this uh, question, Fontana, but there is a corner, and the corner was actually earned by Kira Malinhorse. Um, in the first 12 minutes, I've seen enough to know that Malin Horse is a baller. I can tell. <laughs> you can, <laughs> yeah. I mean, just you see some of the runs that she's making. She just earned a corner. Looked like a little bit of a meg there. Uh, Malin Horse is one to watch. And this, this corner looks like it's been practiced. So we'll see. First corner of the match for the Panthers. Foul call. That was Wells, who was taken out by Bon Flasher. And this is Mellenhorst standing over the ball from the right, looking, looking to play with the right foot as well as her teammate number five, who's whipping, that's a dangerous cross. That's Schapansky, whipping him with the left. Schapansky, one of the captains. Okay. Love to see a fellow left footer. <laughs> yeah, it's always good, the lefties out there, Fontana. I, I know you're a lefty. 
Any, anything just from, from a perspective of the free kick and the difference between the ball being swung in by a left-footed player versus the right-footed uh, uh, outswinger? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think it makes it a lot more, you know, difficult for, you know, Mikal defense as well as, you know, Tegan Y to, you know, get a hand on that. Um, makes it definitely a bit more chaotic. Uh, traditionally, um, Shabansky is going to be their, their free kick taker. She has, you know, 12 assists on the season, is leading the country in assists right now, um, and has just such great delivery. And she's just, she also has five goals this season as well. So... Definitely captaincy worthy. <laughs> yeah, that's one to watch. I found it impressive as well that um, Leontini, you know, similarly is a, is a free kick specialist for the Golden Bears and uses both of her feet, right? I, I mean, I'm still just, just so impressed that, you know, she can take a corner with both her right and her left foot. I don't know how many people <laughs> I know that can do that. I don't know you. Do you know many players in your career that yeah, can yeah. take a corner of both feet? Honestly, when she when she did it at first, I was a little bit taken back. I was like, wait, okay. And she just does it with such confidence and, and self-assuredness that I was just like, all right, let's, let's go. <laughs> In the 15th minute. McMahon finds Carol. Some fancy footwork. Good work to find. Leading goal scorer there. <laughs> Lima. Briggs seeking to do likewise on the right side, but loses it. It's interesting, uh, Fontana, you mentioned that um, Wake Forest is actually was ranked higher than Pitt when, when Cal played them the mm -hmm. last match. Um, but again, coach Neil McGuire mentioned that this match, he believes, will be the toughest match thus far for the Golden Bears. It's interesting, right? Um, it should be noted that the head coach of the Pitt Panthers, Coach Waldrum, is also the national team coach for uh, the Nigerian national, yeah. women's national team. So, I mean, I mean, you know, you're talking about two um, highly respected head coaches on both of these programs. Um, this is going to be a chess match. Uh, you know, you want to, we're not playing checkers here today. This is, <laughs> this is chess. Uh, I imagine there will be some tactical adjustments. Um, and, you know, coincidentally, I did chat with um, both head coaches. Coach Waldrum happens to be an Arsenal fan. Um, so, uh, you know, I know, you know, there may be some Arsenal fans watching. I, and, um, I know Arsenal had a tough weekend, mm -hmm. um, but um, this, this may be more like an Arsene Wenger type uh, <laughs> you know, coaching matchup uh, against a, a Kenny Dalglish in, in uh, Neil Maguire being a Liverpool fan. Mm -hmm. we're, we're going back, we're taking the clock back, you know, for those who don't know the older managers of these two teams. But right now, the Panthers are on the prowl, and that's a dangerous looking shot that could be there! That was a special effort, and it's not over. Danger! That was a classy curling effort, Fontana. If you're a Golden Bears fan, uh, they, they dodged one on that one. Mm -hmm. um, with the post being the only thing that kept the score at 0-0, zero, zero, um, Y was beaten. And the shot was well taken, one-time shot that was curling, 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 and just failed to dip underneath the bar. Um, and the Golden Bears are trying to turn to the other way now. Some, some, uh, some, some, some problems, some challenges. Could be trouble. One flesh shot. Loud cries from the crowd for shoot it. This, you, 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 you will hear the crowd shouting. One flesh shot went for pass it on that one, trying to place it. Um, not necessarily the wrong technique, but didn't get the, qu the, the connection that she probably wanted. Your thoughts? Yeah, I don't think she definitely, she definitely didn't get the connection that she wanted. Um, you know, I think that might even be a time to do a little chip over, just with a little bit of traffic in the way. There was a couple of players in front of goal. Um, but, you know, there'll be a lot more opportunities, you know, as this, this match progresses. Yeah, that was a chance. Both teams now have had chances. Panthers got theirs literally on frame and actually hit the frame. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, Lima also causing some challenges. You can tell that her pace, though it's been prepared for, 
it's different when it's proximate, when it's up close and personal. But these Pitt Panthers are also showing that they are what the scouting report has said. They are a classy outfit, and this is a shot. Such a great touch by Tegan. That, that was world class. And so difficult to do. Panthers continuing to push forward. Overlapping run. This is a good opportunity. They're squaring. Golden Bears are under pressure here. Pitt Panthers are as advertised. They are organized uh, and they are an excellent uh, attacking outfit. I'm enjoying seeing the movement. Uh, they are doing some things uh, that are causing the Golden Bears some trouble. Fontana, your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I think I think Pitt's just it's they've just displayed to be such a dynamic team, you know, working the ball from the mid midfield to their forward line, and and like Cal, their forward line is just relentless. And I think you know, in the Cal Scout, they described their their offense as just gritty, and doing anything to get it done. In the 20th minute, score is still 0-0. Each team has had one corner. The Pitt Panthers have had three shots, one of which uh, uh, kissed the, the top of the bar, um, nearly dipping under the bar, a curling effort that um, had beaten uh, goalkeeper Tegan Y. Uh, that was a really good shot. I know as a left-footed player, I mean, mm -hmm. when you saw that come off her foot, I'm thinking you're saying that's trouble, right? Yeah, I mean, I think just taking, you know, a shot like that, um, she took it with just such so assertive. And um, I personally, as a left-footed player, always love getting balls on the right side, just curling that one in back post. And it was so close, if only it dipped a little bit. Um, but we haven't, that's not the last we're going to see of Schapansky for sure. Yeah, Schapansky um, has already um, l let the folks know that she's here to play. 5'5", uh, five, five, uh, senior, so she just she brings seniority mm -hmm. uh, and, and great skill. You can tell already uh, that she is a, a high-quality player. Good burst of speed. Ooh, good work. We call that a petit pont. No Meg there. Fiercey is also Pacey. Um, it looks like he's got some skills and touches. That was a really, really good run from the back. Ashley Moon from Summers, New York, who also showed some pace um, from the right back position there to really turn a simple pass from a goalkeeper into uh, an offensive foray down the right flank. That was good work. <laughs> referee Wiseman, we're in the orange there. Trevor Wiseman is the referee for today. If you just joined us, the Pitt Panthers are wearing white. The Golden Bears in the navy blue. Briggs finds Bonflasher, finds Leontini, back to Briggs, a little Bermuda Triangle there. Ellie Cofield's taking the throw. Cofield, a Mars, Pennsylvania native. You look across the pit roster as well, Fontana, you notice that there are a number of players from Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. from New York. See some representation, some from Nigeria. I yeah. uh, got some uh, you know, Canadian representation, but it's an interesting um, sort, of, you know, sort of geographical representation there, right? And especially when we think about the ACC footprint. You know, last match, uh, it was noted that the Wake Forest lineup had a number of California players, yeah. uh, whereas here, um, we don't see as many folks from California. We see you know, Coco Dorfman from San Diego, 
Um, but uh, unlike um, the, the last opponent, there are f far more folks who are from the, the East Coast region uh, on the roster there for, uh, for the Panthers. Felice King has made her way onto the pitch, replacing Miriam Hills. Von Flasher has made her way over to the left side of the pitch where Hills started. It's a growing crowd here, Fontana. It's a growing crowd. I would, I would say folks are, uh, you know, probably knocking off from work a little early, and, you know, maybe a little early or, you know, uh, a little flat schedule that the mm -hmm. folks are making their way in. I imagine by beginning of the second half, uh, it will be an even bigger crowd. Yeah, no, I know. Uh, you know, 4 o'clock on a Thursday is always a little bit hard. You know, people get off work and kind of want to go home and chill, but I'm really happy to see the turnout today. Um, as well as, you know, kids still have classes up until, you know, seven o'clock. So we'll see some student athletes ro rolling in hopefully soon. The Antini battling, hold on to that. Keen closed down nicely by the Panthers. Madden Horse. Boone is able to that task. With Fiercy on her shoulder. Boone is listed at 5'6. And uh, Fiercy certainly looks at least as tall as her, if not the same height. Uh, so. I think to our earlier question, Fiercy is certainly taller than 5'3". She's a strong uh, looking striker there uh, for the Panthers. And she's already asking questions of the defense. Thus far, the Golden Bears have answered those questions with a no. But I expect that we'll be calling her name a couple of more times on this broadcast. Panthers are squeezing the Golden Bears. Mm -hmm. Campbell Carroll, that's a great cross. Campbell Carroll seeking to defend there. Really good cross by Wells. Maybe a little heavy. He loses everyone at the back post. Yeah, I mean, I think I'm really glad to see, you know, Campbell, uh, you know, really step in as a freshman. Um, as in this, this uh, outside back role um, and has been really handling Wells well so far. I know that Wells have gotten a couple great um, opportunities and crosses off, and so it'll be a great little matchup right there. <laughs> Courtney Boone commanding directives to our team. That's one thing I appreciate about Courtney Boone is she is always talking, always directing, always making changes and just keeping everybody on the same page. Um, and why she really makes such a great captain and, and just has so much leadership on the field and really, you know, keeps the midfield and defense um, aligned and in, in, on the same page. Yeah. And the leader off the field. She's uh, a co-president mm -hmm. of, of the Black Student Athlete yeah. Community, BSAC. Uh, and as well as a leader in her in her sorority, uh, so I uh, want to acknowledge um, Courtney Boone, certainly a key leader and co-captain for the Golden Bears. Good touch by Briggs, who turns nicely. Looks like the referee has decided that he wants to take a little bit of the shine off of that fluorescent yellow card. You know, this golden sun, it can, uh, it can dull the fluorescent, if you will, and he's decided to don it by giving out a fresh yellow, a fresh yellow card of the match. Uh, good work by 
uh, Skylar Briggs, who uh, is, a, is a team favorite, you know, hardworking, uh, industrious right back. And yellow card has been issued, a yellow card that may match the yellow of uh, Sarah Shapansky's captain's armband. <laughs> Fontana, your thoughts on just even referees giving cards, right? I know some may be watching and trying to figure out, like, okay, why was that a yellow card versus other times where maybe just the ref calls a foul? Have you figured out the sort of the, the, the calculus of what, what becomes a yellow card? Um, perhaps we'll wait for after this, yeah. this attack with the Panthers who are um, marading into the Golden Bears box. Kloss finds Bon Flasher back to Kloss. To Daly, to Leon, uh, bypass Leontini. Two bad touches there. Good to give away a throw. Yeah, I mean to the uh, the yellow card. I traditionally those are for a little bit more egregious tackles where you kind of have to keep the game in check and make sure it doesn't you know get too chippy. Um, and I think as a referee, it's really hard. You really want to maintain the game, like find a balance between, you know, letting them play and, you know, sometimes there's a hit here or there, but you also don't want it to get out of hand and not call anything. And then people are, you know, being a little bit too aggressive. Panthers have created some space and broken the lines. And this one has um, found its way into the center of the 18 yard box. Panthers are bipping and crosses as if they're going out of style. This is an opportunity for the Pitt Panthers. Golden Bears should be cautious not to give away a penalty. They did so in the last match. And they've earned a corner. By the aforementioned Mellenhorst. That was great defense by, you know, Malia McMahon. She, you know, she's patient and she didn't bite, um, which is what which is what Mountain Horse was kind of looking for her to do. Um, and yeah, while it's a corner, um, it easily could have been a chance on goal. Panthers have their, their second corner. It's going to be a left-footed in-swinger from Shapensky. Lima clears it and then sprints forward like an Olympic sprinter. 100 meter runner to put a little pressure on the Panthers defenders who had a lot of time. Nice work. Whipped in cross. Shapensky seems to be at the heart of a lot of the good things that the Panthers are doing. And that's a cross and a header on frame. It's a shot. You can see, I mean, they're finding ways to break the lines. They're getting crosses yeah. in, and they're also finding some spaces to slip the passes um, through the lines and really creating the, some challenges for the Golden Bears thus far. Bon Flash is going to have to use all of her speed to get to this one, and she gets there and is tackled. And the referee will continue... Um, to use his cards, given a, a second yellow card mm -hmm. for the Panthers on that one. That card is going to number 13, Ashley Moon. It's interesting when you start getting, you know, cards early in a, a match like this, relatively mm -hmm. early, with only a third, th third of the way through, uh, especially when you're in a right back position, you have to defend in the future. You have to be very cautious. You yeah. can't foul again right. in a way that gets you a second yellow and yeah. then that leads to a sending off, right? Yeah. It's Leontini, Curly near post. It's opportunity. Clip it there. Head collision there, the Golden Bears. Um, they look like Valise King was was looking to head that one. Um, it was a bit of a coming together between her and number 19, Grace Pettit. Good to see Grace is standing on her feet, getting some water. 
that 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 free kick caused some problems for the Panthers. Yeah, I mean, I think you know the Bears throughout the season have been really good at you know causing a little bit of chaos and just kind of getting on the end of things. Um, that definitely could have been one of those more moments, um, but it's also great to see you know. Um, um, Pittsburgh player doing okay. Got this Pettit. Thank you. Gretsch is okay. She's been able to make her way back on the pitch. Speaking of on the pitch, I see uh, looks like some of the family of uh, my other Voice of Cow Soccer teammate, Key Lee Roy, who made her way to Austria yeah. and apparently scored her first goals of the season in her first match. I think she scored a brace, apparently. I need to see the highlights. I need some receipts, but um, it's great to hear that, that Keely yeah. is doing well, playing professionally overseas. That makes me so happy. I know that it's been kind of a long time coming for her. And, you know, while we miss her here, we're really excited to, you know, see her doing great things, um, you know, here and abroad. <laughs> Um, so we couldn't be more happy for her, for sure. Alexis Wright has made her way onto the pitch, replacing Maya Daly. Kloss rising high, heading well. It's good work. You don't beat Julia Leontini much, and she did. Panthers creating space. There could be trouble. That was Chloe Minas early on with the with the move and created space. Getting past the Antini. Minas is one of the other captains for the Panthers, as well as uh, Caulfield. Nima. Well defended by the Panthers. What is it like um, when you've seen someone on film and then you see them in person? When you think mm -hmm. about you know, playing against someone, particularly a, a player, let's say, who has pace. Yeah. And, you, and you're trying to prepare yourself for the matchup. Uh, what, what, what do you think is going through the, the Pitt Panthers uh, defensive players' minds as they're encountering Carly Lima for the first time? Yeah, I mean, I mean Carly is a hard one because it's like you think that you've played against players that are fast before as a, as a, as a defender. Um, but I don't think until you experience her, is when you really like understand how how fast she is, and like especially when she hits that third gear. You like to see it? Some of the freshmen, uh, fresh years players for the Golden Bears, um, getting some rousing cheers going. Always great to see that. That was Sophia Q and. Uh, Victoria, as well, who's there, cheering on her teammates, trying to get a little home field advantage. Uh, Victoria Jones, uh, goalkeeper, I'm sorry, ta attacker, and, and Sophia, a, a goalkeeper. Um, this could be an opportunity. Not a great kick by Y. McMahon with a solid clearance. Laxis right. Chloe Minus looks comfortable on the ball. Mm -hmm. she, she's a she's uh, a midfielder's midfielder. You can tell. Fifth year. There you go. She's a fifth yep. year player, right? Montreal Quebec. She, she she's done this before. She's pointing around. She's getting the ball. She's demanding it where she wants it. You know, she's pushing off of people who get too close to her to say, "Listen, this is my space." Um, 
you 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 can you can see when a player feels like they belong. <laughs> yes. She certainly belongs in this yes. pitch. Yeah, I mean, I'd say like you know, as a midfielder, you can't hide. Like she, you're gonna need to have the ball, and you clearly see her, you know, out there directing and looking for it, um, and being a huge, you know, playmaker and game changer out there. Golden Bears are struggling to mount an attack here and get out of their defensive third. Their 4-4-3 formation is being pressed by the Panthers who are pushing forward with urgency and with strategy. There's, there's definitely um, a game plan that's working thus far for them. It was expected, I believe, from the Cows coaching staff, but certainly uh, the Panthers are, are as advertised. And this is a turn and an opportunity for the Panthers. Could be a dangerous shot saved by Tegan Y. What a phenomenal save by Tegan, you know. Obviously, I'm not a goalkeeper, but I do know that, you know, holding on to a ball that's, you know, being shot at you is, is really just makes you, you know, an exceptional player. And why? They've won bronze, you know. She brought home bronze um, this last week. Yeah, Tegan Y represented the United States. Goalkeeper, starting goalkeeper for the U.S. Under-20 World Women's World Cup national team. But this is... Felice King, who's strong on the ball and using pace. Skylar Briggs is tackled. It's throwing in Golden Bears. And Tinker will, Tinker will be bringing that some experience as well, right? Mm -hmm. Fresh off of her performance there overseas, made some penalty saves and some other amazing uh, saves for the U.S. team. Coming together there, two players. Both getting up slowly. Definitely unintentional. Both committed to the tackle, to the game. Yellow card's given. Okay. That was, that was, seemed like a, sort of innocuous coming together. Um, mm -hmm. But the referee has seen that as uh, an infraction on the Bond Flasher and an infraction worthy of a yellow card, which sort of goes back to our earlier sort of uh, conversation around, you know, sort of how cards are adjudicated and decisions are made in that regard. And, um, sometimes I think it almost feels a little like, you know, your, how your parents may you know, <laughs> so try to manage the behavior between siblings or in a class, in school. And, yeah. you know, if, if somebody has maybe pressed the buttons too many times, you, it may be your first offense. But yep. if the teacher's not having it, then you may get the punishment. I don't know. But um, it's interesting, <laughs> right? It's, it's an it's a interesting relationship between uh, player and referee. And ultimately, you know, it's not an easy job for our referees. We appreciate the work that they do. Typically, it's a good thing when you don't have to mention their names too much as it relates to impacting the outcome. But they yeah. play a key role in the flow and players' expectations of what's allowed. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think, you know, it's definitely a hard, hard job because one person's going to go away unhappy at the end of the day. So you can't be perfect just out there. Um, but they really do just try their best, and we're really thankful for them. Haven't mentioned the name Deborah Abiodun yet, um, but Abiodun is on number eight, and Abiodun looks like a player to watch um, from Oyo, Nigeria. I've actually been to Nigeria, spent some time in Lagos, and uh, I don't know uh, if the connections of the head coach to the Nigerian national team helps with um, the recruitment of players from Nigeria. Certainly, there are roots there, but. Um, Abiodun is a Nigerian uh, soccer player. And there's also uh, Celine Ota, who's on the roster from Nigeria. So um, great to see that. Good to see uh, number eight, Abiodun, on the pitch. Score is 0-0 here in the 40th minute. On the campus of the University of California, Berkeley, where the California Golden Bears are hosting the Pitt Panthers, two ACC juggernauts looking to build on strong starts to the season. Both teams in form. This is a heavyweight tilt. Um, 
No goals thus far, but certainly some high quality soccer on display. We anticipate that there will be more goal scoring opportunities and perhaps a goal um, before this broadcast is finished today. So don't go anywhere. We have about five minutes to go before the half. And we know that a lot of goals can be scored in those five minutes leading into the half or yeah. those five minutes right after the half, right? And, you know, a lot of times that's when goals are often scored, when people's maybe energy is waning or focus is waning. Uh, and Leontini is hoping that she could be a part of that for the Golden Bears. Felice King looking speedy and scurrying to run. Alexis Wright, right with another bite of the cherry. And Lima, always lurking where there is an opportunity for a goal. That was interesting. Yeah. I mean, I wish I wish Alexis, right, had, you know, gotten a toe on that one. But, um, you know, like you were just saying, you know, the last five minutes, I like to call those big five moments. Um, Leontini! Yeah, big five moments for sure. <laughs> the uh, first and last five of each half is... Um, where people sometimes um, aren't as turned on um, and are definitely times to exploit. If we continue with the metaphor of the, the, the heavyweight bout, this felt like, you know, sort of like, a, like you know, at the end of a, of a round and the, the <laughs> boxers are going at it and they're using the energy. I mean, that was a, just a, a succession of exciting uh, opportunities. Uh, both teams uh, have had their moments certainly the panthers have um I, ha I think had a lion's share of the possession and sort of dictation of the pace but the golden bears have looked menacing at times and release king of course nima mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're, they're in that space and and leontini doing what she does this is this match is delicately poised folks um you you do not want to um move from your seat you do not want to change whatever streaming uh, mechanism you're using to watch this match, you want to stay here. This is exciting, particularly his next three minutes before the half. Shooting, that's danger. <laughs> Abby Odun shooting there from, the, from about 20 yards. The ball was not hit as cleanly as she probably would have liked. She got a little bit of, got a little under it, so the ball sort of um, maybe took some of the pace off of it, but yeah. it was right idea. No, definitely right idea. I think even like, you know, Tegan tips that and players following up. Super easy little tap in right there. I think, you know, definitely want to keep those low and hard um, as, you know, the game progresses. Carly Lima's f presence is felt. That, that's the other thing. I mean, um, you know, you think about the, the Panthers, just that, that, that the, the animal, the Panthers, and how mm -hmm. it prowls, if you will. But Lima also seems like she may have some golden beer in it, but she's got some <laughs> Panther as well. You can see that yeah. the, 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 not just the, the fervency of her attacks, but she's consistently chasing you down with pace. It's seeming to have, its, have an impact on the defenders. They don't look comfortable. It's definitely not comfortable. It's, it's like I said, until you feel Carly chasing you. <laughs> um, feels like you're getting hunted. Yeah, this so is it. That, that, yeah. That's, that, that, that's what I was thinking of the Panther yeah. analogy. Thank you for putting it precisely, right? And, and as a soccer player, I mean, you know when you feel that you have time. You can play more comfortably. But sort of like the quarterback who's gotten uh, a, a, you know, a tackled or sacked a couple of times yeah. where you get to speed up. That's what seems to be happening a little bit with the defense there for the Panthers. Certainly their attack looks good, but you can also see some moments where between Lima and Valise King, there's some speed in the Golden Bears attack. Nice work. Abby Odom for just a little, slight little fake creating space then moving to receive the ball into space and then passing, lovely work. Good work, Abby Odon again. And another Petit Pont. Little Meg, cross. And that's the end of the first half. The score is 0-0 zero, zero between the Golden Bears and the Pitt Panthers. Only a matter of time before we see a ball in a net. Well, one of the folks that has been uh, 
a name we've called, has just played the ball to start the second half, uh, Samaya Fiercy, uh, who is um, a striker to watch, but also starting the second half, uh, Deborah Abiodun, who's just already showing her confidence on the ball, number eight, and moving the ball nicely for the Panthers, who have started the beginning of the second half, how they play much of the first in possession um, and looking dangerous. The Golden Bears, with one shot and one corner in the first half, had their moments, would you agree? Definitely, yeah. Uh, but certainly, I, I imagine Coach Neil McGuire would have uh, had a couple of things to suggest and say to the team. What do you think, Coach McGuire, in a moment like this, in a game like this, you've been in the locker room, you uh, have played for the Calvin Soccer Program. What do you think would have been shared? We have a player down, Klaus down, as well as Abby Oden, who uh, came together with her. I hope they're both okay. Some medical attention going to be given to both. Yeah, I mean, while this plays out, um, yeah, I mean, I think at half, um, Coach McGuire definitely would like, you know, the Bears to play a little bit more composed, um, I'd argue, and just trust their soccer, really, um, and trust that they can, you know, do what they do well, um, and just getting down the line and finding those crosses in, um, because we didn't see as much of it as we normally do, you know, the first half, but as the Bears have proven, they are a bit of a second half team, so they're definitely going to be showing up um, the second half. And one of the reasons why they're a second half team as well is, you know, when you have speed mm -hmm. and consistently f speedy runs that are being made, and, and, and in particular, I'm thinking about not just Carly Lima, but I'm thinking about Felice King, who's also on the pitch even now. Uh, as, that, as the legs get tired in the second half as a defender, but you have players that are still running as if it's the first minute in the match, that's hard to defend for yeah. a full 90 minutes. Yeah, I mean, I think this Cal team is one of the fittest teams that, you know, I've seen over the past couple of years, um, and, it, and it really shows they can wear teams down, um, especially in the second half as, you know, legs get tired and, and they can keep on, you know, pushing. However, I'd also like, you know, to credit Pittsburgh a little bit. They also s scored most of their goals in the second half um, and, two are a little bit of a second-half team um, as, it, as it comes to goals. So, you know, I think, I think both are extremely fit and, you know, well-prepared for this, this second half. You said this is one of the fittest uh, Cal teams you've seen the, in, in the past. Are you referring to sort of preseason and the beat tests and the things, or are you talking about something more general? Um, I mean, yeah, like just, just your legs. Like the more miles that, you know, you put on them, like you just last a little bit longer. And, you know, Julia, Leontini, Alex Kloss, like those girls can run forever. I'll, I'll, see, I'll sometimes even see, you know, Alex um, – We'll finish weights and she's like oh i'm gonna go on a run i'm like you, we just had practice earlier too what um but you know it just goes to show their dedication um and their buy-in uh to this team what was taken there by tegan why the golden bears have started the second half differently than they started the first half noel bonflasher has uh started the uh, second half here more in a central midfield position um, and it looks like um, Belize King has actually started here on the right and Soleil Dimri has made her way onto the pitch playing in a left attacking position uh, King picking up her head opportunity to maybe do some damage here cut inside the box creating space this is dangerous by King it's Dimri it's there Soleil Dimri go 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 With the finish after the assist from Valise King, 1 0 Golden Bears. What amazing work by Valise King. You know, just she, she almost looked a little bit offside, held a run, and was able to stay onside and just drive that ball in the box and cut it back for um, Soleil, which was an excellent finish. And I'm so happy for Soleil. You know, she kind of had some injury spells earlier this preseason and has worked so hard. Um, and that just paid off right there. Soleil Dimri finishes with a plum, right-footed strike. 
Um, really just an uh, exciting moment for her. You could tell the combination of joy and relief um, and just the feeling that you have in execution and preparation um, meets opportunity. Wonderful finish. 1-0 Golden Bears. Pitt Panthers will be feeling like they have had the lion's share of opportunities and shots, but certainly after the work of Valise King down the right, that was probably the clearest goal scoring opportunity that we've seen in the match. And hence the finish. Yes. Carly Lima just ran what looked like literally a, a mini 200 meters. <laughs> she <laughs> had a whole band and everything. I mean, <laughs> just a racetrack. Yeah. And the reaction from the team, they were standing, you know, the fans, I mean, it's not a huge crowd. We've seen larger mm -hmm. crowds on a Thursday, um, but certainly an enthusiastic one. And one that I think is beginning to believe with this team. This team yes. has done some things that would suggest they are, um, that it's possible. Mm -hmm. That the things yeah. that they've been working on is possible. Your thoughts there. You've, you're, you've been a part of this. You've been a part of this. You've seen it. What do you see? What are you sensing? Yeah, I mean... I think that, you know, coming into the ACC, we, we have, I mean, this is the first time we've, as a program, have, you know, played Pittsburgh. Um, and I think, in, in a way, there's, like, no expectation, which is, is great in a sense that you kind of go into each game be, thinking that it's, you know, this is going to be the hardest game because of the, because the ACC, you know, has just proven to be such, have such a powerhouse full of, you know, teams. Um, and, yeah, I mean, I think... This team really is starting to believe in themselves, um, as they should, as they've, they've had a really impressive record so far. Campbell Carroll is beaten there. This is trouble for the Golden Bears. Opportunity, could it be? Corner, that's a corner. Um, action there um, by uh, Samaya uh, Ferry. It was, uh, I couldn't tell whether she was potentially up been fouled or whether it was a corner, mm -hmm. um, you know, Asking questions, certainly, and referee has um, caught a corner there for the Panthers, who will be looking to equalize as quickly as possible. It's a good cross, dangerous cross. Important had at the back post by Bonflasher to clear it out. And we will do that again, albeit from the other side. We talked about it before the break. Mm -hmm. how the five minutes before the half, which we saw an increase in action, and then the five minutes after the beginning of the second half. I, you know, we're not prophets, but I think we know a thing or two about the game of soccer. What do you say? I mean, it's been five minutes, so I, I'd, I'd argue, yes. Corner, dangerous corner. Opportunity shooting! That was a really good opportunity for the Panthers. And who else but Cloney, I'm sorry, but Chloe Minas, who has been a part of a number of good things that the uh, Panthers have done all game. We've called her name in the first half. If you join us in the second half, uh, Chloe Minas is someone to watch. She's a fifth-year player from Montreal, Quebec. Um, she is what appears to be a complete midfielder. Um, sent to the pitch, wants the ball, demands the ball, sprays the ball, but also can, she looks like she's got some girls in her bag as well. The Panthers are on the prowl once again. Cross, it's a bit strong there. Boone, it's outworked, or well, outmuscled, I should say. Probably not outworked, but outmuscled initially by Abby Oden. But is able to clear the danger, albeit temporarily, as the Panthers continue to push for an, for an equalizer. From a pace perspective, Fontana, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I know in the past the Golden Bears have been playing from behind. I mean, you think about just the mentality of the team, um, depending on whether you go behind or whether you're, you take a lead. What does taking a lead with five minutes into the first half do, in particular, for this match for the Golden Bears, for confidence? Um, your thoughts on just the, the turn and tenor of the match, particularly because Pitt has really been taking the game to the Golden Bears for many portions, for good portions of the match. Yeah, I mean, I think it helps a little bit with, like, the momentum for the Bears. Um, going into us giving them a little bit of energy and a boost. At the same time, I'd like to challenge them, you know, to not get comfortable with a 1-0 lead, especially with a team against Pittsburgh that is not going to give up till, you know, that buzzer hits. 
Yeah, Shamaya Fury is, 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 is someone that continues to press. You can tell that she works hard. She's picked the ball up nicely here, the Irvine, Texas uh, native. It's Korean. That's a good cross. Dangerous. Ball was put in a dangerous area by number five, uh, Sarah Shapunsky. Wasn't able to find a teammate on the end of that one. But it was good work nevertheless down the left flank. Yeah, I think the, the, the Pittsburgh has been having a lot of success down that left side. And a lot of that can be credited to, um, to uh, Shapansky, you know. I mean, those balls whipped in back post are extremely dangerous. And, you know, the weak side is oftentimes, you know, the easiest to exploit as, as that defender is sometimes the least engaged. Dimri using the confidence from that girl to um, provide some much-needed physicality. And Belize King is a problem, a handful. She may have run out of real estate on that one, but Belize King is, I mean, she is moving down this right flank. And as we should in the first half, she looks like she's causing some apprehension for the Panthers' defense. You can, you know what it's like, Fant Fontana, when yeah. someone is coming at you and they're coming at you with pace, but also belief. She has belief in her bag today. No doubt. She, she has worked so hard this season and, you know, especially coming off the bench, she has been such a game changer for the Bears. I think sometimes even her speed is a little bit, you know, overshadowed by Carly. I mean, Carly's so fast, but Belize is a close second and also causes an equal amount of problems. Yeah, she scored um, an important goal. Uh, she scored against NC State last Thursday. Uh, the first goal for Cal in their ACC official play against ACC opponent. That was a special moment. Um, and it was cool. You know, I, if I could just, you know, share a little bit. I, I actually, one of the things I shared with her before she got on the, well, she was on the bus, actually. I sent her a message. I said, VK, uh, I know you're talking about packing your bags for this trip. I hope you pack some belief and some courage um, because you're going to do something special. We need you. Uh, and um, she also packed some class and some quality, um, and you see the belief and courage that she's playing with. And this is a good ball to Lima, who's in, but her touch lets her down, and the Panthers breathe a sigh of relief. That's the ball. Yeah, that was that was some great, great tracking back. Um, and it just goes to show the pace that, you know, Pittsburgh also has in their back line is able to keep up with Carly. Yeah, that was good pressure by the Panthers' defense to be able to try to run side by side with Lima. I definitely think balls like that are what the Bears are going to be looking for, you know, throughout this half. You know, finding Carly into backspace. That's Pittsburgh's line is a little bit high, um, and uh, Carly is fast enough to get there, as we've seen. Well, especially with a, a one nil lead, the Golden Bears can now do a little bit more on the counter attack. But this is a dangerous opportunity. Abby Yodin of the Pittsburgh Panthers has looked a handful and some mm -hmm. every single time she has touched the ball. If that one's on frame, I think she's wheeling away and celebrating an equalizer. Pitts press continues to cause problems for the Golden Bears. It's a good looking cross, but only as far as McMahon. Blocked again by McMahon. Another corner for the Pittsburgh Panthers. This is a critical time in the match. For Pittsburgh, they sense the need for an equalizer and they're pressing mm -hmm. for it uh, for the Golden Bears. Um, one goal, you know, could be sufficient if you can navigate this particular time in the game. Yeah. But certainly the Pittsburgh Panthers will be looking for an equalizer and the ball is crossed in. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think a goal for Pittsburgh would really change and continue the momentum that they've already been building, you know, throughout this game. Um, and I think if they get one, they know that we can get another. Absolutely. This ball is played in. Tegan Y. One observation. I think sometimes for the Golden Bears there, when they um, 
instead of just sort of clearing the ball f or off those corners, they may be able to be a little bit more intentional um, and not just boot it out and give it back to, uh, to Pitt. But again, you know, sometimes you know, we can't feel the pressure that they feel. We can see the space that they may have. But I think that's just something that, I don't know if you've observed that as well from your angle or from our, from our viewing audience, if they can see that. But um, the Golden Bears seem to be trying to take caution, <laughs> right? Safety right. first. Right, you know, sometimes, I mean, I call it live to fight another day. You know, sometimes you just got to get it out of there. Um, but other times, yeah, I think they could be a little bit more pa patient and trust their soccer um, as they are capable of, you know, building the ball up the field and creating um, opportunities. Zoom like that, right? Mm -hmm. One flasher, and Carla Lima is going to use her pace and see whether this Pittsburgh defense is as fast as they say they are. She wins one matchup, finds another. Good looking cross, trying to find King. Games open up, a lot more space in the midfield here. Mm -hmm. Ball over the top. McMahon able to it. Minas was able to block away there. Y was able to come off her line, clean it up. Rolls it to Leontini. He's immediately put under pressure. Score is one nil to the Golden Bears. And I was just going to ask this question to you, Fontana. I was going to mention, you know, how coaches have a feel of who and what for which games. Yeah. And Soleil Dimery comes off after scoring. I was going to mention that, you know, those minutes that Soleil just got have been often going, they've often gone to Kenley Whitaker in other matches who hadn't come on yet. Mm -hmm. um, Whitaker has now made way and is on the pitch. Uh, Kloss is back on the pitch. And there's a challenge, a mix up with Boone at the back. Not sure what happened there. Maybe a slight miscontrol. But a number of substitutions for the Golden Bears. Miriam Hills is back in and left back now. Uh, looks like she's replaced Campbell Carroll. And Alexis Wright has also come onto the pitch. Um, looking like she's playing in the right attacking uh, position with Carly Lima and Valise King uh, getting a breather. Yeah, I mean, as you saw, a lot of running for Valise and Carly just there. Um, I'm sure they will be back in. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think it's good to give them a little bit of rest, for sure. And that, that was the question I wanted to ask you, right? I mean, obviously, you've primarily been on the playing side of it. I'm, I'm sure you've had some, maybe some coaching <laughs> moments and you know, you know, young players and the like. But um, when you think about the strategy of of who's playing and subbing in at different times. What do you think Coach Neil McGuire was thinking when he brought on Dimery and you know, just some of the substitution patterns that you see? Do you see anything that maybe is noteworthy as far as who has come on and when? Yeah, I mean, I think everything that you know, Coach McGuire does is very intentional. Um, I think starting the half um, with those three um, was really smart. You know, there's a lot of pace up top. All three of those players are very fast. Um, but you also don't want to sub them all at the same time. Um, and, you know, Alexis also has some pace, too. So seeing her come in for Carly um, is, in a way, replacing um, that speed up top at the ninth. It's a lovely interception by Minas, who I've said Minas' name multiple times yes. uh, in this match. She's everywhere. She is everywhere. But that's a lot of space to, that you have mm -hmm. to, you know, take care of in the middle of the park there and it looks like she's the main six the main central midfielder for them and she is covering a lot of ground clever play Fabiota little Meg there to try to get past Boone but then between Boone and Briggs that's a lot of a lot of defensive power Alexis Wright is showing that she has some speed as well 
and Aaron Sothrovian for the Golden Bears. I mean, I think that's the thing, too. If you're a defender and you're having to face sort of round after round after round of folks who are running at full speed, you know, that, that's a lot to handle for 90 minutes. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think both these teams, um, their front lines are very fast, and it has caused both, uh, yeah, both back lines to really put some miles on this game. Courtney Boone plays the ball into the center of the pitch. Quickly, offense turns to defense as the Panthers are once again making their way towards the Golden Bears. Goal. Space is created. Shot taken. Tegan Y falls to her right to collect that one. Um, saw it all the way, but you can see how quickly defense becomes offense for the Pitt Panthers. Confident passing from the Golden Bears who are getting a little bit more possession. Time of the run well is Whitaker who actually runs outside the lines and does what she does. Witty, witty Whitaker, we call her, who's created space, was looking to pass it to Leontini. Maybe a little miscommunication. Abiota, comfortable in the ball as she's been all match. Felice King putting them under. This time not winning it. Good work by number 13, Ashley Moon. The Panthers building nicely. Good passing, only as far as Hills, whose header finds the Antini. Bit more composure on mm -hmm. the ball this time. You asked for that, you mentioned that. Is that yeah. what you were referring to? Yeah, it was. I think, you know, I think in. Maybe in the first half, Courtney would have tried to, you know, kick that, kick that long, and, and I'm glad she found the midfield. I think we needed to find the midfield a little bit more um, in the first half and, and trust each other, um, which has been reflected this half now. That's a big collision. Julia Leontini not backing away. Needed at number 13, Ashley Moon. Courtney Boone. Able to toe poke it and pre 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 uh, prevent a corner. So throw in deep, deep, deep down the line there for the Panthers. Nice work. That's a good cross. McMahon. Bump Flash are having a conversation with the referee, asking questions. Referee says no, no foul there. That's an important tackle. Bump Flasher. You can just see the pace of the game slowing down again. You saw this first five minutes. It's as if mm -hmm. it's like you know, it's almost like feeding time. I, I, I go fi I'm from Bermuda, you go fishing, and like there's certain times where it's just like you throw the, the bait over and it's just nipping at the bottom. Everybody's trying to, right? And there are other times where it's just like, okay, it slows down. And uh, like, you know, you have a sense that it's like goal time, and other times where it seems like there's a sort of jockeying again, right? Almost like yeah. a boxing match, another metaphor. But um, it seems like it slowed down just a little. Golden Bears don't seem to be concerned about that. Actually, mm -hmm. they seem like they're just trying to take the sting out of the match. Is that, is that what you're seeing also? Yeah, I mean, definitely. I think, you know, the first 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes of each half is going to be the most intense. And then it's going to, there's going to be a little bit of a fall off um, and up until you reach that like last 10, five minutes when it's like crunch time. If you're trying to get a goal, um, like you're down. So we'll definitely see it pick back up for sure um, as Pittsburgh tries to um, get an equalizer. That sounds about right. We appreciate your expert analysis. <laughs> Having graced this field a number of times, scored goals on this field. We have Mia Fontana who uh, knows what this pitch, what it feels like to play on this pitch. Abiota is doing some things in the midfield. Abiota looking like another 
uh, Nigerian great J.J. Okacha, who's <laughs> one of the great Nigerian soccer players. She is, she is a handful. That's good interplay. Runs out of real estate there. And once again, on cue, the Golden Bears have some cheers that are being led by the team. Just to up the ante again, up the ante again. Um, and it doesn't hurt if you're trying to up the ante to bring on number 12. Mm -hmm. You're replacing Valise King, who is speedy uh, and powerful with Carly Lima, who is equally so and has shown that she has an eye for girl as well. Interesting to see the posture of the bat benches as well. The Pitt Panthers are, are seated. Golden yeah. Bears bench is all standing. It's interesting, just the, the small moments. Referee doesn't call foul there, okay. Maya Daly will be grateful for that call. Um, Samaya uh, Ferry was looking to uh, take on Boone in a potential goal scoring opportunity. Referee saw an infringement, calls it back. Inside the 69th minute, the score is 1-0 in favor of the Golden Bears. California Golden Bears uh, got their noses out in front for Soleil Dimri. Effort after some good work by Valise King down the right flank who beat our defender and squared the ball for Dimri uh, to uh, just, just curl our effort uh, inside of the goalkeeper's right upright. And instigates wild celebrations from our teammates. Dimri's first goal of the season. And since which, Pitt Panthers have had their share of the ball, but the second half feels a little different to the first half where they were dominating possession in, in bunches. Uh, this second half, the Golden Bears have been able to settle down a bit and uh, consistent with what my compadre in the booth here <laughs> shared. Um, it seems like that may have been something that Coach Neil McGuire was looking for them to do in the second half. Yeah, I think it's a big part of what has allowed the what has allowed the Bears to kind of dominate this half a little bit more, um, just keeping the ball more and getting the Panthers running. You mentioned the significance of this match as far as you know perceptions of Cal in the ACC and you know folks seeing them on tape and seeing this record in the standings. Uh, folks should know that this is a serious division, this ACC. <laughs> um, you know, as of, uh, of, of, of Sunday, the ACC RPI top 15 rankings were in this order, Fontana. Uh, North Carolina for the second highest RPI, Wake Forest at three. Florida State at 4, Stanford at 10, Notre Dame at 11, Pittsburgh 13, Virginia 14, Duke 15, and at that time California were at number 81 mm -hmm. as far as RPI. Yeah. And for those who maybe even not so familiar with RPI, do you, what, what should they know about RPI as far as, I know there's certain games that are, you know, when you think about who you lose to or who you win against, yeah. it matters, right? It does, yeah, and I think, I mean, it, it matters a lot, especially for, you know, the NCAA tournament as that comes up. Um, as well as, you know, it just it just kind of shows, like, where people kind of stand and how they've done that season. Um, and it all kind of come full circle at the at the end with, you know, obviously a, a national champion. Um. Bitty, 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 yeah, good, 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 good. Thank you for that context. All victories are not rated the same, basically, it sounds like. It sounds like it matters who you play and who you win against. Certainly a win here for the Golden Bears. Would build on the draw, the tie against Wake Forest, mm -hmm. who have a good RPI as well. Yeah. I believe they're number five now, after, especially after their amazing win against Stanford, who was number one, I believe, at the time. So things are trending in the right direction uh, for a number of teams in the ACC. Two of them on this pitch. Your friend, your fans of either of these these teams, you're feeling good about the start to the season. Their non-conference play has been decent.
Tegan Y is another player that can play both of her feet. You want that from your goalkeeper. Definitely. Her distribution is, is amazing. It, it's some of the best I've ever seen. That's good work by Kenley Whitaker. Ball is squared over for right. Kenley Whitaker just does these little things. Like I said, this little Whitakerism. It's a little witty, witty <laughs> Whitaker, I call it. Just these different little things. Just on that one, body positioning while uh, placed, turns to a left, creates space. Uh, for a cross for the Golden Bears. Good work by Whitaker and Von Flasher. Panthers seem like they've lost a bit of steam. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's come a lot from, you know, the Bears just being able to keep the ball and, and getting them running, and, and in turn, you know, they can't transition as fast and as quickly. You know, and to Kenley um, Whitaker, uh, I'm really glad she's kind of grown into her own and just built a bit of confidence this season so far, especially as a freshman. Um, she's been really impactful so far. I know she has two assists. Um, I believe one coming from this NC State game, um, assisting Carly. Yeah, Whitaker has worked hard. Um, it's great to see you know, just the confidence of your these these fresh year players who yeah. are contributing mm -hmm. uh, on a senior heavy team. Yeah. Um, but certainly, you know, the Campbell Carrolls who, you know, has earned the starting left back position, right? Um, as well as, you know, Whitaker who's come in and, and done some good things. You know, you need that, that mix of experience uh, and youthful exuberance. Um, and just something different. And Whitaker brings something different there. Every time she comes in, yeah. she's hard to defend. She seems to get past her defender, uh, you know, defender, pretty consistently. And you want to see that for if you're coaching Neil McGuire. If you coach Waldrum, what is he maybe trying to communicate to his team at this point in the match? A bit of urgency, I would argue. You know, there's there's only about 15, right? Yeah, 15 minutes left um, of this match, and and he's definitely wanting to see his team being a little bit more direct, I'd argue, um, and just you know, kind of pick up the energy a little bit as as this game comes to um, an end. Von Flesher and Alexis Wright have made way. Felice King back on the pitch, as well as Julia, Julia Leontini. The Golden Bears, it won't get any easier. Their next match will be against Miami on mm -hmm. Sunday at 1 p.m. back here. You want to check that out? And the Pitt Panthers will be taking their prowl down the peninsula. Yeah. They'll take on Stanford on Sunday, number six Stanford at 4 p.m. So um, a nice little West Coast trip for them. I wonder if many of their fans or parents made their way out here. But if you if you didn't, um, next time they make that trip, you're going to want to come and hang out in, in Northern California. This is a beautiful area. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. I didn't mention this earlier, but again, not a cloud in the sky. Um, the weather is beautiful. Um, it's, it's lovely temperature, about 68 degrees. and um, so we want to encourage our new ACC friends to make their way out here to come and see. This is a dangerous shot. It's there almost off the post again. That was a it's there almost. Yeah. <laughs> that one from the time of that red boot was a problem. And once again, only the post has kept the Panthers off the scoreboard. Mm -hmm. Hitting the post in the first half as well. Sometimes you have to be both good and fortunate. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd like, you know, you mentioned earlier, like, what, what does um, Coach, uh, Coach Waldrum, you know, what are the changes he's making? I did notice that, you know, he moved um, Spicanti on, onto the, to the right side where she's cutting in and hitting shots like that. Um, and, you know, 
we know that she has an amazing shot um, and delivery, and, uh, and so you know that was just a testament to that, really. Yeah, Courtney Boone tracking back well to guide the header out mm -hmm. for another corner um, for the Pittsburgh Panthers, their fifth. This one's taken short. This danger. Golden Bears dodging, dodging opportunities and attacks from the Pittsburgh Panthers who continue to press. And you feel that momentum building the game. But you yep. mentioned it as you're getting closer to the end, that urgency. The Golden Bears are not going to have it all their way. Even though they have a one nil lead, Pittsburgh still confident and building for what I believe is going to be an exciting final 13 minutes of ACC soccer. You do not want to go anywhere. No. Such fine margins. The Golden Bears will know what can happen at the end of a match. They scored two goals in 11 minutes to close out the match against Wake Forest to earn a tie. Pittsburgh will be looking to do likewise. Carly Lima seeking to use her pace and really, really, really good defending. Really good defending by number 13, Ashley Moon. Mm -hmm. Yellow card given to Skylar Briggs for a tackle. Yeah, that was great work by Moon right there. She, you know, with Carly's speed, you really do have to seal across her and, you know, find that find that shoulder um, and just kind of get her off her her running track in a way to just kind of um, get her off balance. And um, she did just, yeah, that was great, great work right there. Yeah, good work. You don't always have to be as fast as a person, but it's also about body yeah. positioning, mm -hmm. right, and making the person have to literally run further than you and have to run around you while you continue to close the angle. And she did that. That was, that was picture-perfect defending there. Perhaps a young soccer player would be wondering, how do you, how do you defend a fast opponent? That's how you do it. There you go right there. Nice header by Daly, who finds Leontini, who finds Briggs. Briggs picks up the ball, but then is outpaced by Lucia Wells. And Briggs is actually out of position, and this could be an opportunity for the Panthers. Briggs is not in that right back position. McMahon powers in and positions herself well. That's, that's a veteran play. That's sophomore Malia McMahon, who I like to call a sophomore senior. <laughs> that was a sophomore senior defensive position. And again, that's another moment where you don't have to be as fast as yep, somebody. Exactly. But a positioning, she positions herself well, wins the ball, wins a free kick, mm -hmm. earns some breathing time for her team. Yeah, no, I mean, I think that, that was a huge, huge defensive play right there for her. Um, I'm just so glad to see her getting, you know, more minutes this season. I, she's just a really talented defender and, you know, Personally, like, I've always had a hard time going against her. Could be an opportunity. Kenley Whitaker has got space, and she may be shooting. Look at the shoot. Deflected. That one was deflected. Kenley Whitaker has been nipping around, looking for her mm -hmm. first opportunity. She shared with me that she has a girl scoring celebration that she can't really? wait to unveil. Yeah, I've seen her assist celebration. Um, that one, when she cut back, I wonder if that was going to be the moment that she would get to unveil it. Instead, well defended by the Pittsburgh uh, Panther defender who blocked it for a corner. Then Leontini takes, and this one is curling. And almost in! Is it in? Ooh! Almost in there! That one nearly curled in directly from the corner and then was sort of fumbling around near the goal, goal line. Somehow stayed out. Just under 10 minutes to go. This is trouble. Three on four. The Panthers' opportunity to equalize could be here. A cut inside. Still maintaining possession. Good and Bears rallying back. Shots kept coming in. Blocked. Leontini seemingly everywhere.
This game has not disappointed. This is exciting <laughs> stuff. Oh, it's got my heart racing a little bit. <laughs> It's a lovely, well, good effort there. Yellow card. It's been given to uh, Deborah Abiodun. 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 Golden Bears are holding on to a 1 0 lead. The shadows are lengthening on the pitch. Nearly half the pitch is being covered or blocked from the sun by the stadium stairs and the height of the stadium here. Yeah, I mean, these four o'clock games are always hard. You know, the sun starts setting, and when you're on that side of the pitch, it, it's, pretty, it's pretty hard to see. <laughs> Eight minutes to go. Whitaker trying to maintain possession. Not able to do so. Good work by Olivia Lee. Scarlsdale, New York native. Guess it'll be interesting as well for maybe if her family and friends or perhaps are watching on the East Coast. It's 8.50. We hope you're staying with us over there in New York and others who are watching supporting your student athletes. Thank you for staying with us. Persistent work by the Panthers. Lucia Wells. This is a dangerous shot. TKY had it watched the entire time. Kira Mellenhorst, we've called her name a number of times today. We've also mentioned other broadcasters. When you were the yeah. number 10, typically you are a bowler. Yes. <laughs> she has not disappointed. Not at all. But what's your number, of, of Fontana, over the years? Is there a particular number that you've preferred? Gosh. Um, you know, for me personally, like the one I've worn, yeah. I mean, you know, in the past I was uh, number 25. Um, this year I was going to be number seven, um, going back to my, you know, my roots, my first number ever. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get to wear it this season, but, you know, hopefully in the future. And number seven's a good number as well. Scott Briggs getting stuck in. I enjoy watching Scott Briggs. Yeah, I've, I mean, I've really loved watching this matchup between Skylar Briggs and um, and Lucia Wells today. You yeah. know, she's definitely, you know, given Skylar a, a run for her money. Absolutely. Um, it's been a great little matchup right there. Yeah, they've both given as much as they've gotten. It's It's yeah. been an accident to watch. This is high quality stuff. You also notice the Golden Bears are slowing down their play. Abby Oden recognizing that has moved the ball back, uh, moved the ball to help put in position for Boone to help speed it up, right? So yeah. you see some gamesmanship, gamesmanship here. Yeah, Nima's probably going to take this to the corner flag. Yeah. Turns the corner, keeps possession, squaring. Maya Daly. Claus. Ritchie, Ritchie, Ritchie. There's been a maturation in the play of the Golden Bears in the past. I know last season, for example, there were yeah. moments where they're leading and instead of going to the corner flag, there's a shot that's taken or something else that's done. Whereas now you see if six minutes to go, it would seem that the mindset is it's one nil and we're closing the gate if you're the Golden Bears. That seems like the mentality. Is that what you see as well? Yeah, I mean, I think so. I think you don't want to, you know, do a little bit, you don't want to do game management too early. Um, so I like that they're still trying to, you know, get a second goal and, and really secure this win today. Miriam Hills using some fancy footwork, keeping possession. Kloss who's chipping in. Release King! 
just eluding her. Leontini winning it back. Felice King taking it to the corner flag. Referee calls a free kick. That's frustrating when you're trying to clear the ball and it only goes as far as Julia Leontini, <laughs> whose touch is immaculate, and then she's spraying the ball back to the yep. person you were just trying to defend from. That's frustrating. Yeah, I mean, that's one of my favorite, thing about, favorite things about Julia. I mean, her, just her first touch is, is so precise and clean, um, which, which really makes her just such, such a beautiful player to watch. King trying to perhaps earn a corner, waste some time. Leontini comes out with it, continues to run with it. Nima's touch lets her down. Abiodun seeking to turn defense into attack, and the Panthers can do that quickly. This ball, wide, comes for it, for it long, and punts it high to the cheers of the Golden Bears fans. Urgency of the match is picking up. This is the frantic finish that I think you alluded to. Pittsburgh Panthers yeah. looking to try to find one, maybe two. Tegan Y, like a veteran goalkeeper, collects it and falls to the ground just to every little second. Every second counts. Every little second counts. If you're a Golden Bear, that is. Certainly if you're the Pittsburgh Panthers, every second counts as you relates to trying to score. Exactly. Leontini tries to flick that one on. Good touch there. But number 13, Ashley Moon. We've called her name a number of times today. Good looking ball. Spray it out wide by Cofield. Abiodun didn't start today, but she is a good player. You can tell that she is a major part of what they do. Good touch. Pitt mounting another attack. Ritter going high. Missing it. Lima, 90th minute, chasing. Another cross coming in, Boone using that same technique she used to score an equalizer or an early goal to block one. This could be a shot that's coming in. This is a dangerous shot. <laughs> Tegan Y with the right-handed save to preserve a one new lead for the Golden Bears. That was earmarked for the back of the net, but for Keegan, Tegan Y. That might have just been the play of the match. Wow. That was a big save. Corner for the Pittsburgh Panthers. This is a dangerous corner. Their set pieces are a problem. This one's coming in. The California Golden Bears are holding on to a one nil lead. Pitt Panthers have been punching, throwing, their best shots at the Golden Bears. This, we said it's a heavyweight fight. Yep. These two teams have not disappointed. Valise King, 89th minute, using her pace and causing problems again and going to the corner flag. Amazing stuff, 44 seconds to go. Leontini boots it long. Fans now on their feet, 30 seconds to go. Two accident teams battling to the end. Anywhere will do at this point for the Golden Bears. Goalkeeper Breach collects. Haven't said her name much today except for the one chance that she couldn't say if other than that she hasn't had much to do. Ten seconds. 
it might just be enough for the Golden Bears. For Pitt, they huffed, they puffed, they battled, but they've come up just short, losing 1-0 to the California Golden Bears, who run onto the pitch and celebrate a hard-fought victory